With only these two components we can build up a current source in our project and that means it doesn't matter which resistor you're connecting to even if it's a short you get the same current running through your pass. If you think that's too easy now, go with me to the whiteboard and I show you how it works. Okay, now I assume I have a circuit and I want to use my transistor and I have a microcontroller where I'm getting out the 3.3 volt and I want to connect the load to the 5 volt. So what I'm normally doing is that I have some kind of base resistor and I'm putting this in front of the microcontroller and between the base and the microcontroller. In that case, I don't want to do this, I will use a transistor on the amateur side. So for the base amateur or for the protecting of the base amateur um, lane it's quite the same because it's just some connection between the microcontroller and the ground so everything is safe. So in this example I just will say it's one kilo ohm. So this means I have here a voltage drop of 0.7 volt. This gives me here 2.6 volt. And the smart thing about this is that it doesn't matter what I'm connecting here on top or even on the load side because everything what I do is limited because of this voltage here and this resistor. So it doesn't matter what I'm doing here because I cannot go over that voltage. And uh, this is quite smart because this is what we want. There, is now, there are now two issues and one issue is now that every current what is coming from the 5 volt and going over the load can only reach here the level of around 2.8 volt. So the maximum drop and the maximum power I can get here is then 3.2 volt and this is limiting us a bit inside of our circuit. But I have a tip for you at the end of the video how to fix it. And uh, there's the second issue what is coming up. So this issue is coming over temperature but in the most dipe reacts it's not a big issue. So, but at least you need to understand it. So normally we have here a voltage current and this is just from the base emitter voltage what I'm talking about. So the voltage we have here. So that one is important for our calculation. Let's start with, let's say we start with black one and this is room temperature and normally it's a curve like this. So here is my 0.7 volt and when I make it hot now it's just a curve like this and this is around 0.3 volt. Um, when I make it cold, let's do it in blue for cold. Then it's around here. That's just one volt. Okay, so what's happening now with our circuit? Let's estimate we have 3.3 supply voltage and we have this drop and this resistor. So let's think a bit about the current. So I start here with 3.3 and uh, give this a minus 0.7 volt. This is at room temperature by the way. And then I have this 2.6 volt where we already calculated and this we will divide by one kilo ohm because it's a resistor and this gives us 2.6 milliamps. Fine, let's check it at cold temperature. It's the same here with the calculation but I have now just 3.3 volt and now for cold I have around one volt where we estimate and then we have 2.3 volt again one kilo ohm and this is meaning we have 2.3 milliamp and for hot temperature it's the same story and the same calculation so we get here 2.0.3 volt where we set and that's 3 volt and one kilo ohm you know the story already so it's just 3 milliamps and this is a deviation we will have for our circuit so it's delta over temperature. So it's delta, let's say delta E from T. So, but I think that's quite nice for a circuit. What is just one resistor and one transistor? Quite nice.
Okay, if you now say this voltage drop is a problem in my circuit, I give you here a video where I'm explaining what a current mirror does and how it helps you in that situation. So, see you there.